cancel culture. Yes, that old chestnut of a bunch of angry people ruining somebody's life over the internet for something extremely minute and probably something that doesn't affect anybody in any way whatsoever. Or something where somebody actually holds somebody accountable for their reprehensible actions and discusses the consequences of what they've done in their past. You see, cancel culture is a very subjective thing. It's a big, scary, spooky thing which a lot of people love to discuss on the internet, and I think for the most part, me, you, myself, your best buddy Jeremy, state that we are all against cancel culture and everything about it. But to be honest with you, I feel like we are all a little bit of a hypocrite when it comes to the conversation of cancel culture. I do believe that if you are on the internet of a social media account and you like to engage in discourse about certain topics, then you have most likely engaged in some form of cancel culture. And I myself would be a ginormous hypocrite if I were to say that I've never engaged in cancel culture. My whole channel speaks about topics on the internet, speaks about the actions of others. So yes, I myself have also engaged in cancel culture. Sorry, you're cancelled. Hi guys, um, wow, I'm so sorry I look so ugly right now. So I think we have to ask the question of, well, what actually is cancel culture? Is it this big spooky scary thing which we all should run away from and cry whenever we hear the words cancel culture? And yes, I'm going to say this word phrase around 50 million times in this video, so please just comment below every time I say it. But also, is it a positive thing? Is it something that we should celebrate, embrace, and do more of? Uh, probably not, but... We're gonna look into all of this. So starting off, we have to take a look at the definition of what it actually is. And I've condensed this down to three definitions. Number one, now this is the most common definition of cancer culture. And this is when somebody has their life ruined for something which most likely isn't justifiable. For example, somebody made a naughty tweet when they were around 12 years old and anonymous Twitter user 9,400,042 has attempted to ruin their life over that said naughty tweet. Now, usually this definition of cancer culture doesn't really Prevail. Most people on the internet do somewhat have a break. Well, they have some form of thought processes and they usually come to the conclusion that, yeah, that bad take that somebody had on the internet 12 years ago probably doesn't affect us in any way, shape or form. And that person has probably grown and changed. But moving on to definition number two. This is the most common form of cancel culture. This is accountability for your own terrible actions. You commit a terrible crime, you commit an immoral action, and people will fairly critique you and call you out and have some form of discourse about your actions without needlessly blasting you of insults and just in general fairly criticizing you and speaking about the things that you have done. <laughs> Now, this is the form of cancel culture that I admit that I have actually participated in, and I think a lot of you have also. Yes, I'm calling you all out, but alas, we have contributed to it. I don't necessarily think that me or you are trying to ruin the careers of most of the people that we speak about. There are some exceptions here and there. For example, Joe Robe, who is a terrible human being, but there are also some examples of where we do just want to discuss certain things on the internet. For example, the situation where it involves React commentary is, is a big topic right now. A lot of people are discussing whether it's immoral, whether somebody like Hassan Piker is in the right for doing his reaction streams and other content creators out there. And I don't necessarily think any of us are trying to ruin each other's career over this discourse. I just think that we are talking about this, but inadvertently engaging in cancel culture because this conversation will then lead to definition number one, because you get some crazy, crazy people on the internet that will take fair criticisms and then use that as a way to ruin somebody's career for no particularly justifiable reason. So in a way, we're not trying to ruin somebody's career, but somebody will take our own words and then use that in definition number one. And now we need to get in to definition number three. Now this is actually the curious case of Jenna Marbles. It's not really a definition, but that's what it is. <laughs> Yes, Jenna Marbles, one of the most famous internet creators around, somebody that is absolutely beloved throughout the internet, known for her entertaining videos, her dogs, her funny podcast, her dogs, her vlogs, and even her dogs. I, so I'm sorry, I, I, I just miss Kermit. I, I, I just miss this little sweet little animal. I do. Please come back. 
Like, please, I, I actually really miss the videos. Now, in the last year or so, Jenna Marbles went MIA from the internet, and I will explain why, but I do completely respect her decision and choices with her leaving the internet, and I mean to step no boundaries in this video, but what I want to do is speak about the situation with Jenna and kind of compare it to other situations and use it as an example when speaking about cancel culture and Jenna leaving the internet. And by me merely saying Jenna Marbles is an example of cancel culture or me saying Jenna Marbles was cancelled by the internet, some people watching this video right now are now going to play into definition number one, because I actually don't think Jenna Marbles was cancelled, and I've only said it just to enrage a few people who weren't willing to watch the rest of this video. So congratulations! You've played yourself. <laughs> so understandably at this point, you may be a little bit confused to why I'm even making this video. And don't worry, there is an actual point to this video. Basically, I think the situation with Jenna Marbles is a little bit of a strange one. Because in the social media bubble, a lot of people like to say that Jenna Marbles was cancelled and had her life ruined. And whilst I, I, I do think differently to that, I definitely think that there is a lot to learn from this situation. A lot of specifics, which I don't think have actually been spoken about about despite this thing happening almost two years ago and these things honestly really surprise me and why is that well the reason for this is uh, Jenna Marbles in her video before she left the internet was actually oh surprisingly enough a human being hold up wait a minute Something ain't right. Yeah, it's a bit of a shock to me, to be honest. Like, I mean, it happened over a year ago at this point, but the fact that an LA YouTuber managed to not be a cyborg and actually be a real human being with genuine emotions, like actually showing forms of empathy, showing forms of real pure emotion, it, it shocks me to this day that we finally got that. And I'm not saying Jenna didn't do that in the past. She very much did. But in this situation in particular, you don't usually see content creators respond when they're criticized or respond in general to things they've done in their past in genuine ways. You'll usually get a response which a lawyer has written, uh, just in general somebody fake crying or somebody just giving the worst apology on the planet. I'm going to pop up a few apologies I'm on the well screen right now. And these are some really oh, 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 boo -hoo. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. Yeah, there are a lot of YouTuber apologies. And now I'm not saying that you can't forgive these people or accept these apologies. I'm not saying that even every YouTuber apology is bad because yes, there are actually a few good ones out there. But when it comes to the LA sphere and all of the influencers involved in it, it does seem that because these people are surrounded by so many different lawyers and PR teams and just in general surrounded by a lot of investments and money, most of these YouTuber apologies from that space are typically extremely disingenuous and after so long on this platform every time an influencer apologizes it's really hard to take it seriously even if they are being absolutely genuine sadly a lot of disingenuine youtubers have really broken the boundaries of trust on this platform now for that quick rundown which I did promise about this situation if you don't know what actually happened Jenna Marbles uploaded a video in 2020 where she basically called out her own previous actions of where she did blackface in old videos and a lot of incredibly offensive things, which she clearly does not agree with now. She clearly regrets those videos. And I'm not the person to accept this apology. This apology isn't for me, but I did just want to say what actually happened here so you have some form of context. But the thing is, with this situation, I, I think it's different because... Jenna wasn't being particularly called out by a massive crowd of people. Now, maybe it would eventually have became that, but at the time of when Jenna made this video, it didn't seem that there was this big vocal crowd calling Jenna out. In fact, it, it really was, I, I guess, just a, a small amount of people because at the time of when it happened, I did not see many tweets about it whatsoever, which is particularly quite strange given that I'm constantly on the internet as a content creator that regularly speaks about topics, but I didn't really see anything about this. So what makes this different is Jenna, uh, she didn't need to make this video. She didn't need to leave the internet. This is something which wasn't required and I think she didn't need to do it and she just could have continued making videos and been fine. Now, I'm not saying I would have agreed with that, 
But I'm saying she did not need to do that. In comparison to a lot of other LA YouTube creators that have responded to situations where they've been called out by a large amount of people where they've basically been forced into making apologies, which they quite clearly do not mean. All right, so I get it. Um, feel like we're at a time where we are purging ourselves of anything and everything toxic. And um, I'm being requested that I address things that I've done in my past. Um, I also get a lot of tweets from people that are saying like, we love you, you unproblematic queen, <laughs> which always makes me uncomfortable because I'm a person. Those of you that are familiar with how long I've been on the internet know that that's not true that I've definitely done things in the past that weren't great and I'm not completely unproblematic and I've tried my best to grow up and to be a better person and first and foremost I want everyone to know that I've always been a two-way street and that any time that you criticize me and tell me that you would like me to do better or to do something differently that I always try to do that. And I try to make fun content, inclusive content, things that don't offend people or upset people. And that's kind of where I am. Now, I don't want to come on here and, you know, completely and utterly act like Jenna Marbles is this amazing god. What I'm saying here is the bare minimum has been done. I believe that this is a genuine apology, and that's just mainly down to the fact that I don't believe Jenna was forced into making this, and also the fact that Jenna Marbles in the past has apologized for some of the smallest, most minute things when nobody was calling her out on it, but also it just doesn't seem scripted or written by a PR team or lawyer in any way. It just seems real. Now, again, this apology isn't for me to accept, and I'm not going to say whether I forgive Jenna or whether I don't forgive Jenna, because that's not for me. But what I want to take with this and do with this is compare it to some of the other content creators, because the genuine nature of this video in comparison to some others is honestly quite insane. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Now, I've been silent for a very long time. I know that's very rare for me. I've taken a lot of time to do a lot of self-reflection. Now in the past, I've been very guilty of speaking out of anger, out of frustration, out of my emotions. I'm so quick to grab my phone and just say whatever is on my mind in that moment without ever really thinking the ramifications of my words, my actions, and for the first time in a very long time, I'm, ref I'm really reflecting on my behavior and mine alone. Now, not only has Lord Voldemort himself made multiple apologies, which he clearly did not mean, but also in this apology in particular, it, it makes me sick for reasons I've already discussed. But Jeffrey in this video, sorry, uh, Tom in this video actually used real tragic events, real terrible things that have happened in a way to deflect from criticism, to almost guilt trip or manipulate his audience into actually believing what he was saying and to stop criticizing him. And did I get swept up into the bullshit again? Of course I did. And for that, I'm forever embarrassed of. Now, Breonna Taylor still has no justice. Black trans women are being murdered every day and the news is silent. Elijah McClain has no justice, and the countless other people who are murdered every single day while everyone just goes about their business, like nothing's happening. And I think that drama and the beauty world, which I have definitely been a part of, it all has to stop. Now, I've spoken about this apology quite a lot of times in my past. It is involving James Charles, and Jeffrey is apologizing for his treatment of James, which obviously now, this apology, I mean, it doesn't really mean much given the fact that James Charles did turn out to be a terrible person, but it makes it even worse that despite James is now Everyone knows it, that he's an awful person. This apology is still bad based on the fact that Jeffrey 
they clearly try to manipulate his audience by using real tragic events to get away with whatever he had done. Like, ignoring the context of what Jeffrey had done, that is so unbelievably deceptful and just in general disgusting, and a really good summarization of LA content creators, because Voldemort himself is obviously the worst one out of all of them. And bringing this back to Jenna, I genuinely believe, without her actually meaning to, her apology exposed the true distrust nature behind LA content creators and how they're willing to do absolutely anything in order to get away from consequences or, you know, cancel culture. I obviously don't think this was Jenna's intention. I mean, I'm not going to put on a tinfoil hat and act like she planned this mastermind thing. Obviously, that wasn't an intention in any way whatsoever, but it's just one person acted genuine, and I'm not even trying to suck up to Jenna here. Honestly, I'm not like her absolute diehard number one fan in the world. I love her content, but I just can't help but think that one person acted a little bit genuine, did the bare minimum, and it really did stick out like a sore thumb amongst a bunch of terrible people. I think if there's one thing that cancel culture does do well is that in a way, it really does show who the fakest people are, and probably not for the best reasons. It does seem that a lot of terrible people, a lot of terrible content creators, because they know that cancel culture exists, they are now trying their best to kind of get around it, to kind of hide their previous actions or hide their terrible actions that they're still doing. And it, it really results in some of the most batshit things ever heard, like Jeffree Star using Breonna Taylor to get away with his own actions. That's so insane, but this is what cancel culture has done. It has pushed people to somehow exposing themselves even further when they try to not get cancelled. And I'm not saying right now that cancel culture is this good thing. Yes, it probably has led to a lot of good, especially when it comes to deplatforming predators, but there is a lot of problems with it. For example, the lack of willingness to accept when somebody clearly is sorry. Now, in certain situations, as I just mentioned with predators, for example, sorry doesn't cut it. When you are a predator, I'm sorry, but you're, I'm not sorry, but your responses don't mean anything to me. I think you should most likely be in a prison cell rather than be on YouTube. I think there is this really weird recurring pattern of when somebody commits a heinous crime and then they come back to social media being like, <laughs> guys, I'm so sorry and I'm Changed. It's like, great, man. You're not in jail. Now you want to come back to YouTube too? Just give us something. But there is also times where somebody will give a bad take. Just a, a bad take on a certain situation somebody may have been misinformed on. And then the internet will go absolutely apeshit. And then the person will respond saying, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean this. And some people will accept that and be like, okay, they've, you know, they've looked things up, they've they've educated themselves and stuff like that. But then some people will be like, oh, I'm sorry, man, but that one bad take you made on the internet that one time four years ago... I, I, I can't, I can't forgive that. I can't forgive that. And that's a genuine problem of cancel culture. People are just out for blood. People really cannot handle the fact that people can grow and change. Now, certain things, again, I have to say it because certain people on the internet are definition one of where they will be ravenous and crazy and angry, but certain people don't deserve forgiveness. I think we do need to realize that certain people don't but a lot of people do. Everything's gonna be okay. And to be honest with you, I myself, I have also in a way contributed to a lack of forgiveness. I, I, I definitely think so. In previous situations, for example, even with content creators I spoke about years ago, like Zoella and stuff, I used to picture these people out to be these terrible villains, and yeah, they did some stupid things, but they're not villains. They're just people on the internet that got a little bit greedy, you know? And I think it's very easy to uh, portray somebody to be this absolute horrendous villain, when in reality is that they are just a person who is flawed and has done some stupid things, and some of the things may be particularly bad, but I don't think that they are these villains. And again, not this isn't this is an attribute it's to every situation, but I think it's a very common thing for somebody to be a decent person and mess up and then the internet 
isn't willing to accept that they can change and learn from their mistakes. And bringing this back to Jenna Marbles, I don't believe this is the case with Jenna. I'm not actually using Jenna as the example here. I certainly think that Jenna Marbles could easily come back to the internet and pull more numbers than she did before because people truly do miss Jenna. I've seen so many tweets stating about how they miss Jenna Marbles' videos and they wanted to come back and create more content, but I think it is worth noting that cancel culture can be extremely toxic, and I don't think that's a hot take. I think we all know that cancel culture can really suck. And I think we've seen situations where we are in a way too scared to be like, hey guys, I think we just need to calm down and have a nuanced discussion. But this moves us on to the next segment of influencers. They just, they don't help the whole scenario when it comes to cancel culture. I think a lot of terrible people on YouTube with millions of subs have only made people more angry and just... I guess have removed faith in a way. I think so many people now hear about influencers and just immediately think bad things because of the amount of content creators that just have been exposed for being terrible. And to be honest with you, I can't blame people for expecting most influencers to turn out to be a terrible person because in a lot of scenarios, that very much is the case. I'm in such a good place. So for me to digress and go back to Jeffrey from years ago, <sighs> I'm embarrassed of myself. I'm embarrassed for my family that they have to see things online. And I'm sad that Nathan and my friends have to go online and deal with this as well because of my actions. In this video, Jeffrey has literally claimed he is never doing it again. Never, I, I guess, whatever this response is again. But then a year later, he did it again. And I think this level of toxicity and just in general disingenuousness, I didn't pronounce that correctly, but you know what I'm saying. I think this has really contributed to how toxic things have gotten because people just think most influencers now, they are bellends. And people can ask extremely reasonable questions such as, why should we accept your apology when it's most likely not even you saying that and it's been written by a lawyer? And are they gonna end up doing the exact same thing a year later? Maybe. Are those tears real? Because I've seen so many people fake cry on this platform. Yeah, they're probably not real. There is such a stronghold of complete and utter bullshit on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, whatever social media platform you use, that now we just assume that everybody is fake. And I can completely understand that because influencers have just not helped. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. Now, I actually quite like Logan Paul. I think in the last two years, he has very much gone down some form of arc of really growing and changing. And I think if Logan Paul can change, most content creators can change. But I can't forget the fact that that apology was his second apology after his first apology did not go down well and even seemed like a very ego-driven apology where he did not seem sad until he basically brought out the waterworks, you know? I can't look past that and that was the biggest situation in the history of YouTube. I was working in an office and I remember hearing my co-workers speaking about that situation. It was on the news, the radio, and that situation is now re rep represented, represented, re represented, by the fact that Logan Paul apologized multiple times because his previous apology didn't go down well. That is a perfect summary of how fake this platform is. Now, I like Logan, I believe he has changed, but I can't help and see that and think that very much has damaged this community and caused so many people to no longer trust influencers. When you have to make more than one apology, why should anybody take that seriously? And I know that situation was old news, but even with such a terrible thing that Logan did, he still managed to somehow not give a genuine response in his first response to such an awful thing. And that brings us all the way back to Jenna Marbles. And I'm not trying to say that Jenna is some, you know, god of YouTube who is so much better than everybody else, but I'm, I'm saying that, hey, I am still shocked to this day at how shocked I was in 2020 when a YouTuber spoke with genuine human emotion. I don't, I don't want to hurt anyone. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. I don't. Um, in case you guys haven't noticed, there's no sponsors on this channel. 
not trying to sell you anything. Like I'm literally just here to have a good time. And um, I don't think I'm having a good time. And it seems like maybe some other people aren't having a good time. So for now, um, I don't, I just can't exist on this channel. It's so sad to me that we now hold the bare minimum in such a high regard. And I think because of cancel culture, that's such a common thing now because so many people have been so disingenuous, so fake and just so inhumane that when we see this one time where somebody actually seems real, we latch onto that and say, well done, that's amazing, that's wonderful. When in reality, it's just somebody actually being sorry. People in real life are sorry for something they've done every single day. But I think because so much money and so many numbers are involved on this application, this god, god awful yet wonderful application, that people's minds have been warped into thinking that they need to say the right things, do the right things, without even meaning it. When someone else tries to take someone else down or their career and it doesn't work, you can't just take a few more down with you. That's not how life works. We have to all take accountability for our own actions and no one else's. And that's what I will continue to do. When I hear something like this clip, I can't help but think Jeffree Star logged into Twitter to see how the youth are speaking now with words such as, I need to be held accountable. We need to be held accountable. He has just taken a load of buzzwords, given it to a PR team, and his lawyer has written out an apology, which he has then read from a script. In my opinion, I, I don't know that for a fact, but it very much seems like that, you know? I can't help but see this and think he is very much trying to say the right things, be very emotional manipulative by saying these things and using tragic events in order to manipulate his fan base into no longer criticizing him and even forgiving him. Ooh, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> so to come to some form of conclusive opinion on the cancellation of Jenna Marbles, I don't think she was cancelled, obviously. I think that for once, a content creator pulled out their camera after seeing their old videos, feeling guilt about it based on a lot of progressive movements that were going on in the world at the time, which really got them thinking. And they said, you know what? I'm going to actually do something about this and say that I feel bad, I feel guilty, and no longer want to be a part of this. And I respect that to like such a high degree because it's just so rare, and I think that's sad that somebody being genuine is rare, and I'm sorry if I've repeated myself a lot in this video, but I just think the state of YouTube is so depressing right now because it is just so inhumane and emotionless, and it's just people basing their words on what lawyers are telling them to say, and that just really depresses me. I said at the beginning of this video I was going to answer the question of whether I believe cancel culture to be a good or bad thing, and my answer is I believe currently what cancel culture represents is a bad thing. I think it could easily be spurred into a positive movement. But the problem is, on the internet, we are so unwilling to have nuanced debates where we can accept that somebody may be wrong and you can educate that person into then thinking the right thing in your personal opinion. Now, obviously, right and wrong is subjective, but I think because of things like Twitter, where there is, I don't know, 280 characters, because we can only fit small paragraphs of our thoughts onto Twitter, I think it leads to people only going for gotcha moments rather than having nuanced conversations. I think calling somebody up, having a debate on a live stream, for example, is so much more productive than just going for these sarcastic little gotcha moments which Twitter is solely based on. I'm guilty of those moments myself, I think a lot of us are, and I think if we progressively stopped doing that and actually debated things and spoke about things with some nuance, some understanding, some debate, you know, I, I think it could really lead to some positive things and people being held accountable could actually work out well rather than some somebody just screaming, oh, I'm trying, I'm getting cancelled, I'm getting cancelled, because that's what a lot of influencers do nowadays. They immediately scream cancel culture, and then people, I guess, rush to defend them, and then people have a war over their right or wrong, and it just leads to nothing productive. So yes, I don't think it's a good thing at the moment for a multitude of reasons, but it could be, you know? And also, I do just have to clarify one last time, Obviously, there are certain situations where somebody has truly done something terrible of where I think that there is no 
need for a nuanced debate. You know, predators deplatforming them, people who have committed assault, stuff like that, people that have said the worst of the worst things. Obviously, I believe there are certain situations where there is no redemption, but in a lot of situations, there is room for redemption. So I'm going to end the video by saying, hey, I think we just not, we just need to, you know, be a bit more understanding, maybe? Have more conversation and tweet a little less. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna end it. We just need to stop using Twitter. You know that flapping thing you were doing with your mouth just then? You mean expressing my opinion? Yeah, that. No more of that. Thank you so much for watching this video, people. Please like this video and please comment. I understand that a few people may get mad at some of the takes because it is a talk about cancel culture, but I would really appreciate it if you went and gave your opinions in the comment section. Like this video because it will probably get this light bombed because of the subject. And also please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 900k. It would be amazing if you could subscribe. And my social medias are inaba69 on Twitter, Jedi Nabba on my second account, and I also have a second channel where I stream and do clips and stuff like that, which is all in the description. Thank you so much for coming along, people. I'm probably on holiday right now, so I may be a little bit inactive on the social medias, but I will try to still upload. Peace out, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You are gay. <laughs>